In the opening scene, we see a man named Damien Nowicki arriving at a secret drug manufacturing warehouse to see his gangster boss. The boss, visibly upset, discloses the presence of a black sheep within the gang. Damien tries to act innocent, but the boss has uncovered his real identity of being an undercover police agent. Finding himself caught, he quickly grabs a gun of one of the henchmen and starts firing. With his professional combat skills, he manages to defeat the entire gang, including the boss. Boss. However, the dying boss tells him that when he learned about his identity, he traced down his wife as well. Terrified of the implication, Damien rushes back home, only to discover that the place is in complete disarray and his wife has been tragically killed. In the next scene, we are introduced to Simon Makowiki, a history teacher at a high school. He is very concerned about his students as a rampaging addiction to drugs has been holding a tight grip over the whole school. Turns out that someone close to the school area has been selling extremely addictive synthetic drugs to the students and getting them hooked on it. One morning, Simon notices that one of his students hasn't shown up for a few days in a row. At the same time, his son Camille, who studies in the same class, receives a phone call from the missing boy's mother. He gets to know that the boy has tragically overdosed on drugs. Realizing that the situation has gone too far, Simon calls his close friend, who is none other than Damien, in order to request his help. However, the latter doesn't pick up the call, as he isn't doing well ever since his wife died. He has even quit his job as a special agent and only spends his days getting drunk at home. But when he hears his friend's voice message about something urgent, he decides to pay him a visit at his place. As they meet for dinner, Simon explains everything about the problems that the school is facing, while Camille eavesdrops on the conversation. Despite learning the seriousness of the situation, Damien refuses to help because he's consumed by his own struggles. Afterwards, he goes to a grocery store to buy more alcohol, but he's confronted by three thugs who try to steal his wallet. At first, he asks them to return it politely, but when the thugs refuse to comply, he beats the crap out of them before retrieving it. On the on the other hand, Simon takes matters into his own hands and sneaks out of his house to visit a warehouse where he suspects the illegal drugs are produced. But as soon as he reaches the door, he is caught red-handed by the gang members. The following day, Damien awakens to distressing news on television. Simon was discovered dead in the warehouse. The scenario is set in such a manner that he is framed as a drug dealer who posed as a teacher and distributed illicit substances at the school, overwhelmed by guilt and remorse for not helping Simon, Damien visits his home and tries to offer consolation to his grieving wife. After living in guilt for some days, Damien finally vows to step back into action and clear his friend's name from the criminal accusations. With the help of his past colleague at the police force, Damien prepares some fake documents and applies for a job as the new history teacher. On the very day of his appointment with the school principal, the working staff at the place try to discourage him from taking up the job, citing its bad reputation. Their conversation is soon interrupted by Principal Lezek, who hires him because he is the only applicant. He also ensures Damien's safety in the school, asserting that he has hired a private security team to prevent the smuggling of drugs. After a brief conversation, he calls one of the teachers, Agata Kirska, and instructs her to show Damien around. From the following day onward, Damien assumes the role of a teacher, but the students display unruly behavior. Despite this, he doesn't fall for their taunts and even seizes their phones to put them in their places. One of the students, Frogface, is so adamant that he doesn't obey his new teacher. As a result, a leader of the school security, Chmielski, is summoned to escort him out of the class. On the way, Agata tells Chmielski to report the boy to the principal. After school, Agata heads to her car to drive back home. In the parking lot, she's unexpectedly intercepted by Frogface and his boys seeking revenge says Frogface. But before they can assault her, Damien and another teacher named Harry arrive at the scene. Damien then gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the boys and defeats all of them effortlessly. Witnessing his comrades being overpowered, Frogface runs away in fear. In the aftermath, Agatha expresses gratitude to Damien for rescuing her and becomes curious about his background. She thinks it was sweet the way that he just beat a bunch of student ass. However, he evades the question by teaching her some self-defense techniques. Techniques. Later, the thugs bring Frogface to Yarrow, one of the many students involved in drug smuggling at school. A few moments later, their leader also arrives at the scene in a full racer's outfit. He removes his helmet and mask, revealing himself 
to be none other than Kamilski, and he was not wearing that helmet because he was too handsome to handle. Here, it's revealed that his security company is just an excuse to have his men inside the school. Both Yaro and Shamilski are angry at Frogface for his misbehavior. They punish him, emphasizing the potential threat to their illicit operations had he been caught. The next day at school, all the teachers are watching the footage from the parking lot and praising Damien's combat prowess, even though assaulting students is totally illegal. This raises Chemilski's suspicion towards Damien, and he asks him about his identity. But the latter sticks to his story of being a history teacher. Following this, he goes to the classroom, only to discover that the security footage has leaked to the students as well. Thus, they flood a series of questions regarding his skills, and also ask him to teach them some moves. This strikes Damien with an idea to refresh the student's mood, so he takes all of them to the basketball court. For fun, he forwards a deal. If they beat him, there will be no final exam. Obviously, the students don't get to land even one hit, but they at least enjoy the experience. Shortly after, Camille shows up, but leaves upon realizing Damien is the new history teacher. Seeing this, Damien follows him and confides that he's here to prove Simon's innocence. The boy reacts angrily, arguing that his father would be alive if he agreed to help him earlier. Damien accepts his mistake and reveals that he's also living with the same guilt. Their conversation eventually ends in peace, and Camille agrees to help Damien in this mission. Later in the evening, Agatha, who has developed attraction towards Damien, approaches him and invites him for a drink. During their time in a bar, they notice a group of local thugs harassing a couple of girls. Damien intervenes, urging the thugs to leave the girls alone. However, instead of heeding the warning, the thugs charge towards him, leading to a physical confrontation. Since these guys are drunk, Damien plays around with them instead of beating them quickly, putting a smile on Agatha's face. Violence is so hot. Afterwards, she invites him to her place to spend more time together. As soon as they arrive, they start kissing, until Agatha goes to the kitchen to grab some drinks. In that moment, Damien is suddenly flooded by the memories of his deceased wife, causing him great discomfort. Unable to cope, he walks away abruptly without informing Agatha, leaving her upset. In the next scene, Emilia finds her friend buying drugs, so she tries to warn her. Just then, Yaro interrupts their conversation and has his guys grab Emilia. Camille steps in to help her, but ends up getting assaulted by the gang. A short while later, Damien arrives at school and greets Agata, but the latter treats him coldly, keeping their relationship limited to professional. Recently murdered wives are no excuses for Agata. Later in class, Damien notices Camille's face covered in bruises. When questioned, the boy simply pretends that he fell and got hurt. Our hero doesn't believe this and inquires with the class, but nobody dares to speak up against Yaro. This makes him feel bad, so he decides to help by training them with combat and self-defense techniques. He then asks everyone to come to his old dojo, which is currently in a messed up state. In just a couple of days, they clean up the entire place, making it ready for use. As days pass by, Damien dedicates extra effort to his history classes and training sessions simultaneously keeping a watchful eye on the gang members. Amidst this, he also manages to locate the place where the gangsters store their drugs and anonymously tip off the police. But, unbeknownst to him, Chmielski is observing his actions covertly. One day, after the training session, Damien stays in the dojo for personal training. During this, a bunch of masked men walk into the place and launch their attack. Despite being more in numbers, they are unable to overpower Damien, who ends up defeating them. The following day, Damien notices Chmielski's security members bearing bruises on their faces, which makes him realize that they were the ones behind the masks last night. From a distance, Yaro tells Chmielski that he has an idea to get rid of Damien and prevent further interference with their business. On that very night, Yaro, along with his associates, breaks into Amelia's house and asks her to collaborate with them in framing Damien. When she refuses, he grabs her by the hair and threatens to kill her father. Ultimately, making her agree. The only trap Damien can't escape is a honey trap. The next morning, Damien arrives at the school to find the teachers and students gathering in the hallway. In an unexpected turn of events, Lezek accuses Damien of sexually molesting Amelia during the training session. As a result, the principal suspends him from work. Until the case gets solved, Damien tries to explain himself, but the security team ushers him out of the building. This results in a loss of trust among the school community, with many now viewing 
viewing Damien as an abuser. The most disappointed person is Camille, who vents his anger on him for breaking his trust. After this, Amelia is so overwhelmed with the guilt that she falls back into her old addiction of consuming drugs. Later that evening, Damien pays her a visit to know why she did so. Amelia doesn't hesitate to reveal the truth, saying that she was threatened by Yarrow. This revelation makes him feel bad as well, but before he can talk more, her father walks in and throws him out in anger. Afterwards, Damien goes to see Frogface, who is currently admitted to the hospital. He tries to persuade the boy to help him in exposing the drug dealers, also citing that the gangsters will no longer accept him back. Frogface, who feels betrayed by the gang, eventually discloses that the drugs aren't brought into the school, but are rather produced inside. After he delivers them across a busy highway. Following this, Damien goes to Agatha to share his findings, but the latter is unwilling to hear him at all. As a result, he walks away, but not before covertly stealing her copy of the school's keys. At midnight, Damien sneaks into the school and makes his way to the chemistry lab while hiding from the patrolling security guards. Once there, he discovers concrete evidence confirming the on-site production of drugs. Suddenly, he hears approaching footsteps, prompting him to hide behind a cylinder. He then sees the chemistry professor, Stefan, entering the room, revealing that he is the manager of the drug manufacturing process. He's like a budget-ass Heisenberg. Once Stefan exits, Damien follows him and witnesses security guards loading the produced drugs into a delivery van. He captures some pictures before tailing the van, eventually arriving at a secret warehouse. There, he's spotted by some guards, so he engages in a fight and overpowers them with their own weapons. The following day, Damien shows the picture to Lezek and Agata, who still remain unconvinced due to the blurry nature of the photographs. Nonetheless, the principal summons Stefan and Chemilski to confirm this. Stefan contends that he was working late on an experiment for class, and the security team helped him in cleanup. Hearing this, the principal dismisses Damien's claim, deeming it as a misunderstanding, even though the experiment was drugs. Meanwhile, Agata visits Amelia's house to uncover the actual truth. She knows that something is really wrong. The teenager, who is overwhelmed with guilt, ends up confessing everything. Meanwhile, Damien reviews the school's security camera footage and realizes that it's all been tampered with. He now starts breaking down as he feels that he's failing in his mission. Shortly after, he is visited by Agata, who apologizes to him for not trusting him earlier. It is at this moment that he shares everything about himself, including his past profession and the reason why he's doing so. Upon understanding his perspective, Agata decides to assist him, and they also share a reconciling kiss. They then go to confront Stefan, demanding to reveal everything he knows. But before he can disclose anything, Chemilski arrives on his motorcycle and shoots the chemist dead. More of a Gabe than a Heisenberg. The next day, the principal instructs Agata to clean out Simon's locker, while he goes to meet Amelia, who is there to confess. In the locker, Agata finds a hidden notebook containing a map pinpointing the exact location of drugs within a secret warehouse. Later on, Damien's students return to the dojo and reunite with him after learning the truth from Amelia. However, their joyous reunion is interrupted when Damien receives a call from Agata, informing him of an attack on Amelia that has led her to a coma. Upon reaching the hospital, she shows him Simon's notebook, and the two decide to investigate the warehouse. Unbeknownst to them, Chemilski still has his eyes on their actions. Upon arriving at the mentioned location, they uncover a stash of illegal drugs ready for distribution. Not long after, they're surrounded by Chemilski, his associates, as well as Lezek, who is finally revealed as the mastermind behind all of this. Shocked, Agata inquires for the reason why he's doing so, to which the principal explains that he has given up on the current generation of students who don't value education. That's why he's giving them what they want, drugs. He then orders his men to finish off the duo. But just before that, Camille and the entire class show up to help their teacher in defeating the drug dealers. The fight ensues between the two parties. The students charge on Yarrow and the other henchmen, while Damien goes after Chemilski. Being a professional fighter, Damien gains the upper hand against Chemilski and eventually kills him. After this, 
this, he rushes out looking for Agatha and finds her in Lezek's custody. The principal holds her at gunpoint, threatening to comply, but Damien attacks him anyway. He takes no time to knock him down to the ground. Believing that the threat has been neutralized, Damien turns his attention to Agatha, only to be proven wrong. Lezek gets up, retrieves another firearm from his sock, and shoots Damien in his shoulder. But before he fires the second shot, Camille shows up in a crane and pours a container of toys on Lezek, incapacitating him and finally exacting revenge for his father. In the aftermath, the police arrive at the scene and apprehend the actual culprits, thereby vindicating Simon's name from the criminal accusations. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.